In BC 15 weather with Chief Meteorologist Alan Seals, certified most accurate forecast by weather rate. Stay updated for the next four or five days to Tropical Storm Ian in the Caribbean right now moving west northwest at 12 miles an hour. It is hundreds and hundreds of miles away from us. Latest data hasn't shown a big difference from the last couple of days, but as you've watched it day by day, what you're noticing is nothing unusual. Models one day will all lean one way, the next day they'll lean another. They're constantly going back and forth as they recalculate what we think the future is going to be, and none of that actually controls what the future will be. It's just data trying to keep up with what could happen. Do notice the most important thing here is where the models spread out. That tells you that things are pretty certain once this system gets into the Gulf, as it approaches Florida, there become more and more scenarios where it can go. And it also can easily move back more to the west or more quickly to the east. All of that is accounted for when you look at the forecast cone, which covers the center path of the storm, two thirds of the time, one third of the time, the storm actually goes outside of the cone. So keep that in mind as well. Ian becomes a hurricane either late tonight or early tomorrow. It gets into the Gulf of Mexico, becoming a major hurricane, category three. And notice the wind projection from pre-dawn Wednesday to Friday afternoon. Wind projection has it very strong and then gradually losing strength. Not to say it'll be weak, but it may do what Ivan and Katrina did, where they were cat fives at one point and they made landfall as threes, but they still had tremendous impact. The impact will not be just within that forecast cone. It could be easily outside of the cone. And remember the center track is where you expect it to be, but that storm could be off by 145 miles in either direction. That's why the cone spreads out when you're talking four days out. And the wind projection you saw there of 100 miles an hour, it could be 115 or it could be 85 based on what we know right now. So it's still a long ways out. We know that there will be hurricane force wind likely as it gets into the Gulf of Mexico. This projection is the probability of feeling hurricane force winds. And then tomorrow and Tuesday, all of that will be moved northward to show where on the northern Gulf Coast folks could or are more likely or not to feel the hurricane force winds. Based on the current projections, we know storm surge, rising water pushed by wind is most likely along the west coast of Florida, especially north of Cedar Key, where storm surge could be 6 to 12 feet. We know that all of the Florida Peninsula is looking for easily a half a foot of rain and then more than that in some spots. And if the track stays far enough to our east, the NBC 15 area could get a couple inches across northwest Florida to basically very little across southern Mississippi. I mentioned that the watches are way away from being issued. They happen 48 hours before the actual impact. The warning happens 36 hours before impact. So at this point, for the United States, or 48 contiguous states, only the Florida Keys right now have a watch for tropical storm winds. But tomorrow through the day, you'll see those watches issued farther and farther northward to, until eventually we'll see some in our area. Lots of folks are asking, well, what's going to happen Thursday or Friday? How much wind, rain, storm surge, or tornadoes might there be? Well, the answer depends on a combination that could easily be 27 different things, which is how fast the storm is, how big it is, how it makes landfall, how slow it's moving. So those are yet to be determined. Meanwhile, in the Atlantic, Hermine is done, Fiona is done, Gaston is about to fade. That leaves Ian as the only but most significant storm that you need to be thinking about. 89 degrees, we tied a record in Mobile earlier today at 94. It is a quiet late afternoon, although an isolated shower could still pop up. We go into tomorrow with sunshine. By late afternoon, though, we'll start to see some clouds. This is a shift in the wind, which will hopefully work in our favor. Watch early in the morning, 7 a.m., partly cloudy, a few showers, and then maybe by late afternoon, a couple of showers along the coast. Notice that north wind, which is a dry wind, and that plays a little role into what Ian may do. Now here are the steering winds. The winds at about five, six miles above the ground. Going from this evening, where you see the circulation around Ian, and it's the steering winds that push it. So it's not just a cold front, it's not just high pressure, it is all of this stuff happening. As Ian gets into the Gulf of Mexico, the steering winds will be stronger heading north than they will be heading south. That's why it will move northward. And even as we get toward Wednesday and Thursday, the steering winds are most likely going to take it north then northeastward and eventually up the eastern seaboard. All of this can change. We all need to stay updated. 
Here's your seven day tracker. Do notice though, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, dry, calm weather to prepare for the what if scenarios of what can happen in our area. And we'll carefully watch Thursday and Friday. Stay with us. There's more news. After